welcome to today's NCSI Summer Camp Webinar Series. Uh, I'm John Bart here, one of your camp counselors, and welcome to today's activity with Okta. And with me today is Wendy Busap, the West Sales Engineer at Okta. Good morning, Wendy, or good afternoon. <laughs> Still morning for me. It's 11.34 here in uh, Utah, where I'm based, and I'm happy to be here. I have been a sales engineer for Okta for about a year. And you came over to the dark side of sales, right? Exactly, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I work for Okta. Just wanted to step through uh, a brief introduction to what Okta is. So, Okta is an identity and access management provider. So, we have an identity platform, um, which is 100% cloud-based. So, there's no on-prem infrastructure, no servers, um, no nothing to update or installed for you guys. Um, and we were founded in 2009 and uh, founded by a guy that was a vice president of development at Salesforce.com. And he realized that, you know, with the move to cloud, there are going to be a lot of companies out there that need to streamline the process of being able to, number one, provision users to those cloud applications, and number two, be able to um, single sign-on into those applications because with all of the cloud apps that we are, are are using now in enterprises, the amount of passwords that we have to remember is just exploding. And so um, he founded it in 2009. We have over 4,000 customers. I think it's close to 4,500 customers now. This slide is a little bit old. Um, we are growing extremely fast. We went public um, last year in April, and we were the the fastest growing um, company that went public on the NASDAQ that in that entire year. So we have 3,000 daily uh, logins coming into our service, or 3 million, sorry. We have over 5,000 integrations with different applications, and that spans from single sign-on to um, provisioning to lifecycle management, uh, all sorts of different integrations with these applications. We are also... Uh, five times Gartner Magic Quadrant leader. Uh, we've been placed as the one most likely to be able to execute uh, each of those years, and I do believe that is true. We have a lot of lot of happy customers out there. Opta's main goal is to enable any organization to use any technology, and we, we differentiate ourselves against our competitors, such as Microsoft, who also has an identity management platform. Um, because we don't care which applications we integrate with. We don't prefer one over another like Microsoft or maybe some other vendors would. Um, all we want to do is make your job as an IT administrator or as an HR administrator or even as an employee easy to do. And so with the paradigm shifts that are happening in IT these days, integration is becoming so paramount. Um, we must be able to have APIs to call in and get information. We need to have automated um, provisioning and password resets and things like that because of the sprawl of all of the different applications we're using. So um, integration is so important these days. And now, instead of having the network or the firewall be the perimeter, people are the perimeter. Um, and using that identity context is what is going to help us to make our environments more secure. And now, also, every company is a technology company because if you don't have a web presence uh, today, your company really is not going to go anywhere. And so uh, we've learned that, that through these paradigm shifts, identity is at the center of all of these things. Now, Okta is the most reliable and secure identity platform out there. Um, this is a listing of our certifications, and um, that bottom right one is FedRAMP. That means that the United States government is, um, can use us because we have the certification that's required. Uh, the CIA, the FBI, the Navy, all sorts of parts of the United States government use us. We are HIPAA certified, which means that um, all of the medical and healthcare folks out there are, can use us and be sure that we have the correct certification. And then we also have SOC. AICPA, ISO, and CSA STAR attestation certification. So the Okta Identity Cloud is comprised of five different pillars of functionality. So first we have single sign-on. This is Okta's bread and butter. This is how we started. Um, we have Universal Directory as the second one. And Universal Directory is our cloud-based user store. 
Uh, and so this is like an LDAP directory or maybe an active directory, but it's not one. And you don't, as, a, as an IT person, have to care what kind of a directory it is or how it's storing things because it's 100% in the cloud and you just interface with it through the administrative UI or through the REST API. We also do lifecycle management, which means we can control the creation of users in those cloud-based applications or on-prem applications. And as the user's role within the company changes, we can modify that account within the uh, application we integrate with. And then if the user leaves your organization, or if the user um, changes roles, we can enforce that change and make that change within the application itself. We also do adaptive MFA or multi-factor authentication, and this is probably one of our, our biggest selling things right now just because of the amount of attacks that are going on and the amount of regulations that are happening from the government um, where we need to really make sure that the people who are accessing our systems are who they say they are. And so um, the adaptive part of multi-factor authentication there is that we are using um, really fine-grained policies to decide when a multi-factor prompt will occur. Um, API access management is the final one. And this is, um, if, if you have an API and you're exposing that API for people to call and get maybe some, you know, private information that you don't want to share with everybody, you need to have API access management wrapped around that. And what API access management will do is basically giving a kind of like a username and password to anybody who wants to call an API to make sure that they are authorized to call this API and they are authorized to get back um, the pieces of information that they are asking for. So on one side, Okta provides IT products. These are products that are for internal um, employees of a company. And the, really the goal there is to allow companies to modernize IT for their extended enterprise. On the other side of our offering is the API products. And this is um, allowing customers to transform their customers' experience. So let's say um, MGM in Las Vegas is a customer of Okta. And um, they use us to provide authentication and user storage um, and profile information for all of the people that want to rent a hotel room in uh, the MGM line of business in, in Vegas. And they use us, um, we're integrated with their website, so if you go to log in and type in your name, it's going to validate against Okta that you exist in the uh, account database and that you have the correct password. And it will pull information down, like what hotel you stayed at last time and all of that stuff. So Okta is facilitating all of that for MGM. All right. Now to the fun part. I'd like to give you a demo of the Okta Identity Management Platform. And I'm going to talk about the IT product side today. We're going to leave the API platform side out of it for now. Um, so I'm going to start, and first I want to show you the end user experience. And then after I'm done showing you the end user experience, so employee equals end user in this, in this situation, um, after I'm done showing you the end user experience, then I'm going to show you the administrative user experience and show you how to set up some of the policies and things that can make your environment more secure. So first of all, this is the Okta login screen. When you come into your company in the morning and you want to get access to your application, this is the login that you are going to see. So if I go to login, notice I've specified my username, and this image appears. This image is our anti-phishing uh, image where the end user picks that image, and that's something that's familiar to them as they come to log in every day. So if they see the wrong image, they know that they're logging into maybe they fat fingered the URL and they've hit a phishing site. Um, the second thing that's notable here is we do allow for password, um, forgotten password to change passwords and unlock account. And how you do that is you just click this link, you specify your email or your username, and then we'll either send you an SMS, we'll call you or we can set, send an email so that you can um, reset that password. And that, um, because of our integration um, with Active Directory, which is a very deep integration, we can um, allow users to change their Active Directory password through our, admin, through our UI here. So now if I go to log in, you're going to see a multi-factor prompt. Now, this multi-factor prompt is, is happening because I have a policy that says, I don't necessarily trust this guy's logging in. And so every single time he logs in, 
um, I'm going to enforce that he does a multi-factor authentication. And now you can use a bunch of different ways of checking to see who that, uh, if that user is who they say they are. Um, one could be uh, Okta Verify, which is shown here on the right. This is Okta's application, a native app that you install on your um, iOS, Windows, or Android device. And this is what it looks like here. It has two different flavors. So you can see um, there is a spot where it will show you a code. And let me just kind of wake up my iPad here so I can um, do my biometric here. Um, now you can type in the code or it can send you a push notification which does not require you to type in anything. All it requires is the, an acceptor tonight, which I will show you in just a second. Now we also have integrations with a bunch of different types and these are just two uh, different factors that we integrate with. I believe there's a list of about 17. Um, so we can integrate with your standard Google Authenticator here where you type the code but it's just using the Google Authenticator app. We can do SMS. We also support things like voice call or knowledge-based question or integrations with um, hard tokens like YubiKey, for instance. So let me just show you what the end user would experience here. So they would say send push, and then on the device pops up an information here, a login request coming in, and it will give the user all of the information to look at and say, hey, yeah, that is that looks like me. I am logging in from um, Springville, Utah right now, and that's the correct time, and that's my correct IP address, et cetera. So I can just go ahead and click approve or deny, and that's all it takes uh, to log me in. All right, so now that we're in, um, this is a listing of all the different applications that I am allowed to, to see or use. And this listing is created due to policies that are created such as which security group I exist in in Active Directory. Um, so you can see this one right here shows a lock icon. This is because I have set up a policy that says because of some contextual um, information like maybe where I'm logging in from or maybe which group I'm a member of or maybe I haven't logged in on this device before. Um, I can lock users out temporarily from using specific applications even if they're assigned to them based on the, that context. I can also do things like enforce an additional multi-factor um, prompting when they go to an application like Office 365 that is uh, really subject to a lot of data loss, right? And so I can, I can make sure and prompt them every time they go into that app um, that they are, are validating who they are once again. As an end user here, I can customize this as much as I want. I can make new tabs, I can move applications from one tab to another. Um, I can reorganize the order of the tabs. Um, I can, I can uh, switch the order of the tabs themselves. Now, um, as an IT admin, you can decide whether or not end users can add their own app. So you can use this um, almost as a password vault, like LastPass as an end user. So you could come in and say, hey, I want to have my, my Delta Sky Miles account um, listed here. So, you could add your own personal Delta Sky Miles and it will appear as a chiclet on, on your home screen here. And then um, when you go to log in, it will record that username and password and then it will replay it the next time you hit uh, the Delta website. Also, and Wendy, uh, we do have a quick yeah. question. Are you able to uh, sort sort the tiles? Um, there is not a sorting algorithm. Like you can't, we can't um, do like an alphabetical. Uh, I think it, it comes in alphabetically by default. Um, but then, of course, since it's going to save if you switch the order of them, then whatever order you have specified is the order it's going to stay in. Okay, and then another question, uh, what theme API feeds are available uh, and relevant to the topics today? S-I-E-M, API feeds? Oh, okay, all right. Security um, information and event management. Uh, Okta is not a, a SIM tool. It is a tool that can integrate very tightly with with a SIM tool like Splunk. We have a, like for instance, we have a Splunk plugin that we can um, install on the Splunk side, which will pull all of the information that's logged in Okta into Splunk, and that will allow you to do things like real-time alerting of maybe, you know, a password spraying attack or something like that. Uh, but I'll get into that more on the administrative side of the demo. So here I wanted to show just a couple more things about what the end user can do. So we're really trying to put control into the hands of the end users so that they don't have to make as many help desk calls um, and really save you money, right? So 
you can come in as an end user here. Uh, if you get a new secondary email, you can switch that email. If you get a new phone number, you can change that yourself without calling the help desk. And that stuff is going to be propagated back to um, whatever applications or directories you specify you want them to be. You can also, of course, do your self-service password management here. You can select a new phishing image. An important thing is that you can reset your multi-factor enrollment here yourself without calling the help desk. So if you, perhaps if you lost your phone, um, you could come in through a web browser here and reset the enrollment that you have for the Okta Verify um, token on, on the old phone, and then you could get a new phone, and once your new phone is, um, you logged in there, you would be prompted to re-enroll into the Okta Verify system, okay? Um, I wanted to go back quickly to uh, the application catalog. So I gave an example of a generic application that an end user can add, like Delta SkyMile, um, but your IT group of people can create a catalog where they can expose the applications that they want you to use. And so, for instance, um, we've got several examples here that this IT um, group of people has decided they want to allow all of their employees to, to use. For instance, go to meeting is one of them. Now, we can come in and request that we can be allowed access to that application. So there's a nice um, email that will be sent to the application admin, and then all of that, um, to your question about um, the SIM integration, will be logged um, when a user is asking for an app, when the app is approved, and when the user logs into the app. So all of that stuff is going to go into the log. And then you can do some nice reporting on that to see, okay, I've bought, you know, 20 go-to-meeting licenses, but I've only got three people that are consistently logging in. And you can pull all that information out of the Okta log. I wanted to go over a couple more things on the end user experience. So um, the single sign-on that is happening here is happening in, in two different types of ways. Um, the one that I showed you where, you know, they go into Office 365 or maybe Salesforce.com, these are, are happening due to the fact that we have set up a trust with this application between Okta and Salesforce in this case. So this is using SAML, which is um, a, a federation technology that allows uh, the, the password is not being sent over the wire. It's actually creating a token that says, hey, Salesforce, I'm Okta. I trust that this user is authenticated and they are who they say they are. So um, can you just give me a session in Salesforce? And that's what just happened. And of course, that is the most secure way to do single sign-on and the preferred way. Um, but there are applications out there that don't support SAML or a federation technology like SAML. And so for that, we do um, a browser replay of the username and password. And we accomplish that through a plugin that we install in the browsers. And so um, when a user goes to a site like Health Equity, for instance, where they don't support SAML, it will just um, ask for the username and password. And, and you know, you hit that sign in. It's going to open the um, application there. And then um, once you log in for the first time successfully, it's going to save off that username and password, and then it will replay it again the next time they log in. And it will ask and see if they signed in successfully. In this case, I didn't because I don't have an account out there. Um, so that is the end user experience. Um, have there been any more questions that popped up? Yeah, we've got one here. Um, are there browser plugins to pre-fill login credentials for sites that do not have integrated single sign-on? Yes. So you can create your own single sign-on integration if there isn't one that already exists within the Okta catalog. And this is something that I will show you um, on the administrative side. Uh, if, maybe if you remind me, you can create an integration with any application that supports a web authentication in the browser um, through a input field for username and password. So I can show you how to do that when I move on. Um, okay. What version of is supported? I see that question. So we support um, 1 1, but of course that's deprecated. So we support um, 2 0 as well, which is the newer version. Question on the chiclets as well. Can you add personal notes to the chiclets? That is something that is in um, early access right now. So it's a feature we're working on and we're having our customers test out. So that will be in the product very shortly. And I also see another question here where are all the passwords kept? So the passwords are stored. Um, securely and encrypted in our cloud database. 
and every single Okta tenant, you'll notice my Okta tenant is called wendydemo.okta.com. Everybody who, um, who subscribes to the Okta service will have their own tenant like this. And for each tenant, there are um, individual keys that are created so that nobody else can log into your tenant and steal the keys that will allow you to decrypt those passwords that we're storing. All righty, well, now we're going to uh, move on to the administrative side of things. So uh, now I'm logged in as an administrator to the same exact Okta tenant that I was logged into before. So you'll notice here I get my list of applications just like everybody else would. Um, but I have a new button up here called admin, which is going to switch my context over. So now I'm logging in as an admin and I can manage the entire system. So here's a dashboard that's going to show some information, some alerts, some things that I might need to do as an administrator. And it's going to give me some quick um, access to a lot of the, the tasks that are, are pretty common for me. It's also going to give me a view of what's happened in the last 30 days so I can look and see, okay, who's logging in the most, um, who's using my application, how many uh, licenses that I've purchased are really being utilized, and things like that. So now let's move along and talk about the uh, universal directory. So the universal directory is going to store users. Now, these users can come from different sources. You can go ahead and create the user uh, within Okta itself just by bringing up this dialog, or you can call an API that will do the same thing. Or you can bring users in by integrating with directories, such as Active Directory or an LDAP directory, or even export users from, you know, some unknown application via CSV file and import them here. There's lots of different ways for a user to become um, stored in the Opti Universal Directory. We also have the concept of groups, and groups are very important because we do group-based and attribute-based access control. So this is how we control who can see and log in to which of the applications are, are displayed to them on their homepage. So you'll see here, I've got a whole bunch of groups listed. This group happens to be one that I just created within Okta itself. Um, these groups are being pulled in from Workday, which is an HR system that I have integrated with. And by the way, Workday and several others like UltiPro um, are, are HR systems that we can use to master the identities that are being uh, pulled into Okta. And what that means is when you as an HR person create a new employee within Workday, that employee is going to be synced into Okta and then Okta will then be able to use that employee's information, its profile information, the you know phone number and the location of address and things like that to push down into other applications and even other directories, including Active Directory. So um, the Workday as a master functionality, as we call it, allows you to only ever have to input user information in one place, and then Okta is going to take that and push to all the downstream applications as well as Active Directory. So you don't even need to go into Active Directory manually and create a new account for that person. It will all be done automatically by Okta. You'll notice also here I have a Windows icon. This means that this group was pulled in from Active Directory. And now we can use that Active Directory group to um, provision access to applications as well. Now, I said we do group-based access control, and we also do attribute-based access control. And how we do the attribute-based access control is we have these dynamic groups. So, for instance, I have a group here where I can say if an attribute of state equals Nevada, then I'm going to pop that user into this dynamic group called dynamic group location Nevada. And that way I can use an attribute value to control what access this person has. Now, the directory integrations are really what brings the power to the Okta solution. So you can see here, I've got my Okta tenant uh, integrated with three different active directories, and you can do as many as you want. And this comes in really handy when you have maybe a merger or an acquisition where you've got your active directory and then you're pulling in a whole new set of people from this new company and you need to bring them in quickly. You can integrate with their active directory and it will sync all the users into Okta, and then you have that uh, single pane of glass view of all the users that are uh, interacting within your system. And we can do that both for Active Directory and LDAP directories. And the nature of the Active Directory integration 
is extremely simple and easy to set up. It literally takes 15 minutes to set up an integration with Active Directory. And what we do is we install an agent, a small agent on two or more servers within the domain. It doesn't have to be the domain controller. Um, and that agent is going to communicate outbound only to the Okta tenant in the cloud. And it's going to go over port 443, so you really don't even have to make any changes to your firewall if you allow all 443 um, uh, communication to happen. So it's extremely simple, and then what's going to happen is you will set up an import that's going to happen on a timed basis um, to pull in all the users and changes and group changes that have occurred in Active Directory. I'll break there just for a second to see if we have any more questions. I see one here about LastPass. Um, how equivalent is this to LastPass in terms of credential management? So it is different from LastPass in that um, LastPass is, is it, well, it's kind of similar in that LastPass stores the username and password and can use a browser plugin to replay it. That's similar. Um, but on the other hand, you can, um, because this is meant for enterprises, um, your enterprise admin is going to be able to create a listing of all the different applications that you might want or need to use. And this is also going to provide a layer of access control on those, which LastPass does not really do. It, LastPass is not going to say if a user is a member of a, a, a manager group, he gets access to application XYZ. Um, LastPass is just that either you have it or you don't, and there's no role-based or group-based access control built into LastPass. Uh, LastPass also does not do any identity management, so Okta can store identities, um, can you know store profile information about those identities, and it can federate with other external applications and directories as well. So uh, this uh, has a similar LastPass in that it can store and replay passwords, but really that's where the similarities end. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to trying to keep up here. Can someone such as an administrator recover a password that an employee has submitted for an employee if they're no longer employed with the company or on vacation and access is necessary? No, so that's by design. We do not allow administrators to see users' passwords. They have the ability to reset them. Um, but cannot view them. Some of them, um, you can say as an administrator that I'm using this application for uh, more than one person. And so you can create like a, like a group account within that application and then you can share um, the chiclet to those members of the group that you want to use that single account within the cloud application. So for instance, uh, a lot of companies have a Twitter account, right? Um, and their marketing department might have six or seven different people that are doing Twitter posts for that company. Well, you don't want to share the Twitter account username and password with those marketing folks because in case one of them happens to leave the company and they're unhappy or they get fired and they have that credential, they might be able to do something like post, you know, something nefarious out there that you'd really rather not they they would do. And so Okta allows you to publish that chiclet on the end user's page, but they cannot view the username or password that's associated with it. And that way, when that user leaves the company and um, you have uh, disabled them within Okta, they can no longer use that Twitter account. Okay, how many bad logins will lock me out? That's configurable. Is the encryption mechanism for passwords six one forty dash two validated? Oh, geez, I'm not. I'm not 100% sure what the what the number is there. Um, I think I do believe we're working on FIP certification right now, but that's what I might have to get back to you guys on. Um, okay, and how long will I be locked out for? Is there a timeout so after XX hours I can try again? Um, yes, that's also configurable. And that's all the questions that I see so far. So I will, okay. if you have a I'll, I'll move on. So let's move on to applications. How easy is it to integrate an application with Okta? And one of the most popular applications that we integrate with today is probably Microsoft Office 365. So let me show you quickly. Um, this is one that I have already integrated. Um, and you can see just a couple of fields that I need to specify when I integrate with Office 365. So I will go through a really short wizard it's going to ask me, what's my Microsoft tenant name? What's my Office 365 domain? Which of the Office 365 chiclets do I want to show to my end users? 
Um, and then um, a couple of other uh, interesting things here that I really don't need to, to go through in that wizard. Um, and then you're going to say, how do I want to do single sign-on to Microsoft Office 365? And we give you a couple of different options here. And as I said before, any type of federation is better security than doing the secure web authentication, which is that password um, replay. And so all you have to do to set this up is say, yeah, I want to do WS Fed. I want to let Okta configure this integration for me and press, you know, just specify your um, administrative credentials within Office 365 and say next. And that is all it takes to integrate um, for single sign-on through the federated WS Fed uh, protocol with Office 365. Now, once you have uh, the integration set up as far as single sign-on, then you can go and do things like um, provisioning, which is life cycle management of the account within Office 365. And so what we can do is we can say, hey, I've got a user that's in Active Directory. I want to be able to provision that user to Office 365. And today that's almost, you know, it's a pretty difficult task using the Microsoft tools. And so Okta has made this a very easy process where you can say, um, I've got users in a particular group within Active Directory and I've decided I want to give those users access to Office 365. So Okta will be able to do the license management. Um, it will be able to sync profile information. And so you don't have to do any of those manual steps. It will automatically create the user in Office 365. It will give it the license um, that you want to give it. So, you know, E3, 5, um, access to Yammer or, or Exchange or whatever the other modules that you want. Um, and then it will create those users in Office 365. And any time a user's um, attributes change within Active Directory, it will automatically update those. And more importantly, it will deactivate the user's Office 365 account if they are deactivated in Active Directory or Okta. Uh, we also have the ability to sync the password um, from uh, AD out to Office 365 as well. Now, you can map all of the information that's stored within AD to Okta to Office 365 here. So, for example, let's say you have a, a phone number that's being stored in Active Directory and it's got parentheses and dashes in it, but in um, Office 365, you want to store it without parentheses and dashes. So you could use Okta as that middle layer to transform the attribute to whatever format you want it to be. And you can also specify if an attribute is named um, email in one uh, app, like Active Directory, and you want it to be named something else, like email address in, in another application, you can do that also using Okta. Okay, and now um, I'm going to switch to the assignment. So this is where you have the ability as an admin to say, I want to assign this to people, right? And so you can either assign it to people as individuals. So you'll see here that the user that I was logging in earlier, he's assigned as an individual. This one gets Office 365 because she happens to be a member of a specific group, and that group can be a group that's coming from Active Directory, or a group that's coming from Workday, or a group that's coming straight out of Okta. Now, this is kind of the fun stuff where we get into being able to specify policies and integrate multi-factor. Um, if you are not using multi-factor authentication at your company today, you absolutely should be. It is the easiest way to prevent a breach because uh, the majority of breaches that are occurring today are happening because of stolen credentials. And so multi-factor, because the way Okta does it, it's so easy to roll out and so easy to specify these policies. That it's really, um, it's not a prohibitor to, in, to, to rolling out this functionality. And it's really something that will save you a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of worries. So here's all the different types of factors that Okta can um, integrate with. So you'll see the ones listed at the top here that I showed in the demo, but there's a list of all the other ones that we integrate. So um, we, if you have Duo Security, for instance, we can um, be the one that specifies the policies for all of the different factors that are listed here. So you can control who gets prompted from one single um, source of administrative. Uh, and that would be Okta itself. So if I come in here, I can show you all the different ways that we can do policies. Um, and this is both for multi-factor authentication and for um, general authentication. So we have the ability to create IP zones. And so an IP zone is something that's going to say, okay, um, my corporate headquarters 
I've, I've got this external IP. So I'm going to treat people that are logging in from my corporate headquarters differently than I'm going to treat people that are coming in from any other IP address. So that's one way to do it. Um, we also have the ability to create dynamic geographical zones. So I had a customer a couple months ago who only did business within Canada, and they kept having password spraying attacks coming in from particular geographical locations. One of those was Bulgaria, and the other was China. And so what they did was they just created a dynamic zone that said Bulgaria and China are blacklisted. And that means that um, they are not even allowed to hit the OCTA login screen and attempt to do a password spring. You can also use these as, you know, a way of saying, hey, I only do business within Canada, and so if somebody's logging in within Canada, they're good to go. If somebody is logging in without Canada, then I'm probably going to multi-factor prompt them or something like that. So those types of um, policies are available. Now, where OCTA is moving is more in a behavior detection direction. So um, we have what are called static policies, which I just showed you. And the behavior detection policies are those that are based upon, obviously, the user's behavior. So we can say, hey, if the user is logging in from a different city, then maybe we need to multi-factor that. Or if they've got a, a different IP address than they normally do. Or they've got, uh, you know, a new device that they haven't logged in from before. So this is using all that contextual information and comparing it against what is normal for that user. And then if we come up with a situation that is not normal for that user, that's when we say, hey, I'm going to lock this guy out or I'm going to at least give him a multi-factor prompt and make sure he really is who he says he is. So once we've configured these network policies and these behavior policies, then we can use them to create authentication policies. And so um, sign-on policies for authentication, I've got a bunch of them listed here that I've already created. And what happens is, uh, Octa will evaluate these policies top down. And so you can say, hey, I've got a sales group who has a particular, um, they've, got in, they've got access to really um, important data about our customers, right? So I'm going to make sure that those guys are multi-factored every time they log in, no matter what they're doing. I can also have a suspicious group. So I've got a group within Octa that I call Watch Them Close. And I've integrated my Octa tenant with um, ServiceNow. And ServiceNow, when it detects that there, you know, something, something nefarious going on, it will add that user via an API call through our deep integration of ServiceNow um, to this Watch Them Close group. And that means that those Watch Them Close group guys are, you know, for instance, I could make them multi-factor or I could even change this and I could just say, I'm going to deny them access altogether. But if I do want to allow them, I can prompt for factor, and then I can specify, hey, so how, how do I want this session to look like? What's the factor lifetime or the session lifetime, et cetera? Okay, we also have the ability to do delegated administration. And so if you have, for instance, like a help desk, where you want a help desk user um, to only have rights to do certain things, um, like reset passwords, for instance. So you can just add a user here, and then you can say, I want them to be a help desk administrator, and I want them to only be able to administer um, specific groups of people, or maybe I can administer all users as a help desk administrator. I can also do things like create a read-only administrator where that person can come in maybe during an audit and look at all of the settings and who has access to which applications and who is required to multi-factor and all of those things. So we've got a bunch of different levels of uh, administrative delegation here. Now, there were a bunch of questions about reporting going on. So um, reporting, we have a bunch of different canned reports that come with the product. Uh, you can do things like look at the logins, the total, the fails. Um, you can do things like look at um, who's assigned to which application. You can look at suspicious activities. You can look at who's been deprovisioned from applications, all sorts of things like that. But that is, if, if those aren't what you need, then you can come into the system log. The system log is going to have extremely verbose information about everything that has happened. Um, so it's going to log in um, anytime an administrator makes a change that will affect something uh, like multi-factor or will affect who has um, access to which application. All of that is going to be logged here. Um, when a user logs in, it's going to be logged here. So, and it's also going to show which um, policies were evaluated to allow that user to log in. And the great thing about the system logs, everything in here is a hyperlink. And so you can look at 
Maybe if you want to look at all the sign-ins, you can click on evaluation of sign-in policy and you can see all of the sign-in policies that have been evaluated within your um, time frame. And then you can create very specific searches here using the search strings and advanced filtering. And you can save those so that you can rerun them. And you can do like, you know, every 30 days, maybe you compare the deltas of who was assigned which application um, for maybe audit purposes, et cetera. But, okay, let me break here and see if there are any more questions. Um, I want to make sure that we answer the question on how many applications that you can log into. So that's unlimited. You can add as many applications to a user's dashboard as you see fit. I think we're up to date here. Okay. So um, that is really the demo. If there are any other questions, please submit them now. Um, and I would love to talk to you about specific use cases for applications that you might want to integrate with and stuff. But as I was saying, you know, there are thousands of applications literally in this system that we can integrate with, which is a, a couple screens of a wizard. And you can see here the number is now up to 5,902 applications that we support. A lot of them support SAML. I think we're around seven to 800 um, SAML integrations that are out of the box. And then there are uh, another subset that support provisioning, probably one to 200 different applications. Um, the pricing, I just saw a question pop in. How does pricing work? So our pricing is on our website, um, octa.com slash pricing. We are priced per user per month. Um, IT products is what we're talking about today. API products is, is the one that's for um, creating custom portals for your consumer users. Um, so we break it down by SKU. So depending on which functionalities you're going to use for uh, your company, you will have a different price associated. Um, and so here's kind of a, a breakdown of what it might be. If you're only doing single sign-on, um, you are $2 per user per month and your uh, unlimited amount of applications for that. So you could have a thousand different apps that you're, you're single signing on in for $2 per user per month. If you want to enable multi-factor, and this is, um, we are adding on top. So you would have sign on is two, plus multi-factor is another three is five. Um, and if you want to do the provisioning lifecycle management stuff, that's an additional $4 a user per month. So if you hit octa.com slash pricing, you can see all of that stuff. Uh, Wendy, before we wrap up, anything else to add? No, I am um, happy to have been able to present to you guys today, and I hope you will check out the Octa.com website uh, for more information and contact us, too. And thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.